Ode to Aptera, the most efficient vehicle on the planet. <laughs> Rich Rodriguez and welcome to my Aptera journey. This channel is about the thrill of the all-wheel drive Aptera on a twisting curving mountain road and the rush of adrenaline with sub four second acceleration time and the pleasure of charging your car from the sun and on some models the confidence of up to 1,000 miles of range. But we don't have an Aptera yet. Despite that, there are some things I would like to share with you today. First though, a little about me. I'm a trained electrical engineer, so I understand how EVs work. I'm an EV owner with over 150,000 miles of experience, so I get range and charging. I have an MBA in finance, and I have been mentored by an investment banker in venture finance, and in my day job, I read and analyze financial statements every day. So what attracts me to the Aptera? The awesome styling, yes. The sub four second zero to 60 acceleration time, yes. Is it the solar charging? Well, yes, though I live in the rainy Northwest. Or is it Aptera's amazing efficiency? For me, it's all about efficiency because with Aptera's efficiency, all these other things are possible. For all these reasons, I am an investor in Aptera, an ambassador, and reservation holder. Well, with the preliminaries done, today's video will have five parts. Part one, current financial market conditions. These matter for when Aptera does their IPO. Part two, capitalization table to IPO. Part three, Aptera's capitalization table and IPO pricing. Part four, Aptera missteps, in-wheel motors, no more. Part five, Aptera's $60 million pre-IPO financing. So let's get started. Part one, current financial market condition. This matters for when Aptera does their IPO. I follow the 20 bond municipal bond index to see where interest rates are heading. I look at market conditions every week. From a medium term perspective, rates have risen dramatically, but with the signs of slowing inflation, economists have trimmed US inflation forecast, paving the way for a Fed rate cut, perhaps in September. However, the yield curve continues to signal recession. The yield curve indicator nearly almost always signals a recession when it's inverted. With a creaky consumer finance exhibiting high delinquency rates as well as faltering commercial real estate markets, I believe we're on the cusp of a recession. We shall see. It's not a good time to go public, but it's a great time to start and grow a sustainable orientated startup like Aptera Motors as a long-term investment in the future. Part 2. Capitalization Table to IPO Many of you may be unfamiliar with a capitalization table, how it works, and what it tells us about events leading up to an IPO. In this section, I will explain how a capitalization table works and what it might tell us about an IPO. At the end of this section, I speculate on pricing for Aptera's IPO. What is a capitalization table? A capitalization table or cap table is a table providing an analysis of a company's percentage of ownership, 
equity dilution and value of equity in each round of investment by founders, investors, and other owners. Well, that could sound like Greek to many of you. So let's take a look at a simple cap table and walk through how it works. Once we do this, you should have a better understanding of what most of you are thinking about, the value of your shares. So let's dig into this. A rapidly growing company may need several rounds of financing to achieve its goals. Here in this example, there are six rounds from founders round, where the founders might put in a few thousand dollars, to the IPO round that could be hundreds of millions of dollars. As the company grows, it is presumed that milestones are being accomplished. These milestones could be patents filed, or relationships with vendors, or sales. These milestones add perceived value to the company. As a consequence, when the next capital raise and stock issuance round occurs, shares are priced higher to account for the increased value of the company. Share dilution. As the company sells more shares, the percentage of ownership by the founders is diluted. Naturally, as the percentage of outside shareholders goes up and shares are sold, prior shareholders' percentage of ownership goes down. Pretty simple so far, right? And of course, as new shares are issued, total shares outstanding goes up. Again, pretty simple. Now let's look at market capitalization. With the exception of the founders round, where market capitalization is arbitrarily assigned, the market capitalization is simply the total number of shares times the price per share. Simple, right? Now something interesting happens when you look at this table from the perspective of an investor on a round-by-round -round basis. If you invested in the A round, your investment value increases by 200%, a doubling in this example, at the time of the B round because the share price increased. This increase in your initial A round value continues through IPO because of the increase in share price. In this example, if you invested in the A round, by the time of the IPO, your shares increased by over 1,500%. Pretty amazing, right? The next column over shows the gains if you invested in the B round and held your shares to the IPO time, and so on. This shows how fortunate you may be by investing early. I suspect there will be some Aptera millionaires. Part 3. Aptera Cap Table and IPO Pricing Let's take a look at a portion of Aptera Motors' capitalization strategy to date. This figure shows the Aptera crowdfunding rounds that I participated in. And I think I participated in every round. Notice the pricing of the shares in these rounds. Now, when we include the percentage of increase from each round, look at what happens. The current offering price is $14.80. So if you invested at the $10.50 round, your share increase would be 41%. If you invested in the $3.80 round, your increase would be 289%, and so on. Early WeFunder investors have seen their investments increase by 6,627%. Wow! Most of my investment dollars were in later investment rounds, so my gain is currently about 60%. Of course, that's only if there's a liquidity event, such as an IPO or an acquisition. My 60% gain right now is on paper or a spreadsheet. But we know an IPO is on the horizon for Aptera. Sunny days are ahead. I've been asked, Rich, what do you think the IPO price might be? Well, given the current 
offering price of $14.80 and speculating there's one or maybe two more rounds before the IPO with maybe 30 to 40% increase in stock pricing, the IPO price might be around $20 a share. Just saying. Once it opens, who knows? And yes, market conditions matter. Sometimes markets are exuberant to see an IPO, and the first day of trading, stock shoots up 50% or more. Other times, the market just yawns and the stock sinks from its initial opening price. That's the vagrancy of the markets. So there is how a capitalization table works, leading to an IPO. And we've looked at Aptera Motors' pricing of their shares, and I've speculated on their IPO price. Part 4. Aptera Missteps, Inwheel Motors, No More. While I am an investor, ambassador, and reservation holder of an Aptera vehicle, I have to admit there have been, perhaps, some missteps that have cost the company time and money. The change from an infused honeycomb body type to the carbon fiber body. Yes, it's better suited for the volume of sales expected, but the change caused redesign, increased engineering costs, and likely delayed deliveries. What about the change in the headlight placement from along the left and right outsides of the vehicle to the center of the vehicle? Yes, it better complies with Aptera's understanding of the law in this area, but it costs time, dollars, and effort in the redesign. And now, the change from in-wheel motors to a standard front-wheel drive system with an inboard motor. Again, this costs time and money in re-engineering of the drive system. Now, I believe the company has removed all foreseeable engineering and supply chain obstacles leading to production. Thank goodness. I believe the pressure is on to get vehicles out the door. We are now on to production. We can expect more changes once the vehicle hits production. For example, the original Tesla Roadster introduced in 2018 had a manual transmission lever. After delivering about 500 vehicles in 2010, the Roadster was upgraded with a push-button transmission, improved heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, a more efficient motor, and improved sound-deadening measures to reduce noise, vibration, and harshness, NVH. Now, I've harped on NVH in several of my videos, because even if you get the hyper-efficiency right, if NVH is way off, folks won't want to buy your product. And yes, to be clear, I really want an all-wheel drive Aptera. But perhaps like the original Tesla Roadster, we'll see improvements after maybe the first 500 or so produced. And hopefully those improvements will include return of in-wheel motors and all-wheel drive. Part 5. Aptera's $60 million pre-IPO financing. In my last video, linked up here, I shared news with you about the signing of U.S. capital to raise the next round of funding for Aptera Motors. Now we have some details of this offering. Not unsurprisingly, this funding round looks like the mezzanine round that we covered earlier in this video. U.S. capital is offering $60 million in convertible notes. What is a convertible note? A convertible note refers to a short-term debt instrument or security that can be converted into equity, stock, in a company. Convertible notes are often used by investors in startups and in pre-IPO companies. They are structured as loans and then convert to a stock in the company. These notes typically have an interest rate on the invested monies, and they typically have a conversion discount. That is, when the note converts to stock, you get a discount on the offering price. These sweeteners attract insightful investors. Remember, 
This investment round is for qualified investors. These include an individual with net worth or joint net worth with a spouse or spousal equivalent of at least a million dollars, not including the value of your primary residence, or an individual with income exceeding $200,000 or joint income with a spouse exceeding $300,000. There are other qualified investor types, including trusts, registered stockbrokers, and more. I'll put a link below to the Securities and Exchange Commission's current definition of what a qualified investor is. Well, that's all I have for you today. I look forward to sharing time with you again soon and reading your comments below. Until then, stay well, do good work, and charge on. Wing this flag. I love the terror. It feels so bad. The future is now. Protect Mother Earth. Keep her healthy for what it's worth. What's your pleasure? Taking off from the sun No more drilling Can't you see